In the weeks to come, we'll be offering you these reflection videos as we prepare for Advent. The word Advent originates from a Latin word, Adventus, which means coming or arrival and invokes the English word adventure. For us Catholics, Advent is a meaningful season that reminds us of the reality that Jesus has come and he is present in our world and lives today. In the weeks to come, we'll be looking at the Advent season through the lens of marriage, motherhood, fatherhood, family, and finally, the gift of the child. Today, we reflect on the theme of marriage with St. Matthew's own Kelly and Dan Ott. Marriage is the most beautiful thing that God has created because in marriage, God created man and woman in God's own image. That is to say that a man and woman who became one flesh are the image of God. Yes, and in creation, God said that it is not good for man to be alone. What follows is the opening scene in Genesis, where we see a marriage, and in the closing scene of the book of Revelation, another marriage, and recall that Jesus performed his first miracle at a wedding. Ephesians 5 shows us that husband to wife is compared to the higher marriage of Christ to the church where masculine nature of giver unites with the feminine nature of receiver. So this union is a covenant, where the man and woman exchange their lives with one another and their complementary nature is combined. So marriage is not a mere contract. It elevates a civil contract to the order of grace, in which the husband loves the wife as Christ loves the church, and the wife loves the husband as the church loves Christ. Marriage regards a husband and wife as signs of another marriage, a higher marriage, the nuptials of Christ and his church. The analogy of the heavenly nuptials goes back to the Old Testament, where God appears as the bridegroom and Israel is presented as the bride. When God becomes incarnate in Christ, his bride becomes the church. In short, a person's whole life is exchanged. In the vows a person exchanges, their soul to their spouses, and vice versa. Marriage calls us to be prepared to sacrifice our own interests for the good of the other. It's important to note that marriage cannot be <clears throat> a communion of persons unless the couple exchanges their respected natures to one another. Here the masculine nature of giver and the feminine nature of receiver combines to complete what, is, what the other is lacking. God created us male and female, equal in dignity, but also with complementary characteristics of men as active and women as passive, so that when exchanged, the two might be a gift to each other. Um, by being mindful of our vows, our vows call us to be prepared to sacrifice our will for the good of our spouse, which can be challenging, but when both spouses do this together, a marriage can thrive. Uh, the secret of married happiness lies in everyday things, in the good humor, in the face of difficulties that should be met with patience, in the forgiveness of each other. Episodes of worry and difficulty are incapable of drowning true love because people who sacrifice themselves generously together are brought closer by their sacrifice. that the story of our salvation began with the marriage of Joseph and Mary. And the marriage of Joseph and Mary was not easy. They both had to sacrifice their will for God's will. They encountered many obstacles. They were forced to take a long journey at the most critical time of Mary's pregnancy. They were thrust into a horrible scene in which King Herod wanted to execute their child. They were exiled from the Holy Land and in Egypt, a hostile place to raise a child. They were poor and faced what we can assume were plenty of heartaches, but their love grew in these difficult situations. Married couples can look to Joseph and Mary as no husband and wife ever loved one another so much as they did. Yeah, marriage teaches us how to love, to love one another, to love oneself, and to love God. The important aspect of marriage is that the love of the husband and the wife ultimately points to a child. As the church declares, a child is the supreme gift of marriage. And the ultimate gift that Mary and Joseph give us is the Christ child. We hope you enjoyed this reflection on marriage. Stay tuned to our next reflection on motherhood.